Well, today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to come to you and I want to talk to you out of my heart. Um, this last week, we have had such tremendous response from the message. Uh, last week, I dealt with spells and uh, satanic spells. I called it Spellbound. That message just, it really went viral. And um, we got such tremendous response from it. I think right now, what I want to do is I just want to come in here today and I want to just talk to you out of my heart about prophetic things, Bible prophetic things. And I want to just sort of help us all get a little bit of a feeling about where we are and how things are. And uh, you know exactly how you feel about what's going on in the world. You have your perspective. If you talk to 15 or 20 other Christians, they may all have a different perspective, but everybody knows that things are not right. That's what we know. We know that whatever has happened was not choreographed by man. Whatever has happened, there's something behind it. There's an intelligence behind it. And there's also a spirit that's causing that to maintain itself over these many months. Much of it has to do with keeping people out of church and keeping people in a state of fear and depression. So I just want to talk about some of those things today. I'm going to deal with it extensively. So I just want like for you to give me your best ear just for a few minutes. I don't think a lot of people really understand that in the eternity past, there was no time. In eternity future, there'll be no time. The only time that is mentioned in the scripture is when God reserved a block of time after he put man on the earth. He put man on the earth and he reserved seven blocks of time known in dispensations where man's government and man's rule would be upon the earth. And the way that broke down was when he put Adam and Eve in the garden, it was called a dispensation of innocence. When that failed, then God went to the dispensation of conscience. There was a stopwatch on innocence. It only lasted so long. There was a stopwatch on conscience. Then there was a stopwatch on human government. Then it went to the dispensation of promise. And then the law. Then the dispensation of grace, which is the dispensation we're in right now. And then the dispensation to come will be known as the millennial reign of Christ of a thousand years of peace on the earth with Christ ruling and reigning from Jerusalem with the church, with the saints of God, Old Testament and New Testament saints. But on each one of these dispensations, we'll call it a dispensation, but it's really a stewardship time that God has given man. A stopwatch was running on all of those. And now we're on number six dispensation, and that's grace. That started at Calvary when Jesus was crucified and resurrected on the third day. That began the dispensation known as the church age. There's a stopwatch on the church age right now that's 2,000 years plus or minus, 2,000 years plus or minus. But there were other ones before that, and you'll see them there. So it wasn't like God just put man on the earth and time just started clicking away. I've had people ask me, they said, well, Brother Kilpatrick, what do you think, how do you think things will be in the year 3320? I don't believe there'll be a 3320. I don't believe that the dispensation of grace will go that long. And I believe it's going to be more or less a 2000 year period of time. So I don't think that we're going into like 3020 or 4015. There's a stopwatch on the dispensation of grace and grace is running out of time. It's coming to a close. You can tell that it's coming to a close. Let me talk to you about that just a little bit. The dispensation of the church age has been really wonderful. It's gone on for 2,000 years. We have seen people reached in the nations of the earth. We've seen great evangelism. We've seen the great missionary endeavors that you can read about in history. We've seen the great revivals that God has sent to mankind down through the years. It's been a wonderful season. But at the closing of the dispensation of grace, as that dispensation comes to a close, the tribulation is next on the docket. It's a seven-year period known as the time of Jacob's trouble. 
It's called Daniel's 70th week. And it's going to be a period of time that unless the Lord shortens those days, no flesh will be able to survive. So is it any wonder now at the closing of the dispensation of grace that we're seeing it looks like everything is flying out of control? It looks like that everything is changing, and it is. You know as well as I do that the Bible prophesies that there will be one come that will be called the Antichrist, the man of sin. And I believe that the world right now, this world system, is coming in alignment with his advent. This world system is coming in alignment with that advent of the Antichrist. And that's why things seem to be going downhill very quickly. You see it, I see it. I'm willing to talk about it. Are you willing to listen? I'm willing to talk about it. Let me tell you some things that I believe and some things that I know from Scripture to help us get ready for the beginning of the tribulation period. I do not believe that the church will be here during the tribulation period. I believe that the trump of the Lord is going to sound and we'll be caught out to meet the Lord. But I do believe as the church age and the dispensation of grace comes to a close, I believe that we're going to probably see a lot of things that we didn't think we'd ever see. And we may even know who the Antichrist will be. We may even know that. But the Bible said, only he who letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And the Lord's going to take the church out of the way before the Antichrist can come in full power. But what we're seeing right now is the ending of the dispensation of grace and the emerging of the tribulation period trying to begin. And right in between these two times, one ending and one trying to emerge, that's where we find ourselves. And we must talk about it. We must not ignore it. We must not shun it and avoid it. We must talk about it. Why? Because God wants you to know. And God wants me to know. And he wants us to be prepared. Now listen to me carefully. I know that God has given the church fivefold giftings. You have pastor, teacher, evangelist, prophet, and apostle. Fivefold giftings. And they're real, and they're anointed to do the work of the ministry in the earth. But I want to tell you something else that I want you to think about. If you haven't thought about it, I want you to think about this. I believe Satan also has counterfeited the fivefold gifting that's right and righteous in regard to the church. And Satan has also established a fivefold gifting of unholy anointings. God's anointing is holy. Satan also has an unholy anointing that he anoints his evangelist to go out and to spread his ungodly doctrines, deceptions, mischief, they're anointed with an unholy anointing. There's people of stature in the earth today that are godless, but they have stature and they also have a platform and people listen to them. I would use the term that many of them are unholy apostles. Then Satan has teachers and he has propaganda that he uses to try to bring confusion to people, including the church but especially sinners, he uses that propaganda and teachers to teach something other than what the Bible teaches and stands for. And then, as you see these unholy people, they're working, they're just working. They have an audience, they have a platform, people listen to them, they have an unholy anointing upon them. I could call some of these people by name and tell you, what unholy anointing I think they carry, but that wouldn't, do, that wouldn't do for me to do that at all. But I think if you think hard enough about it, you can think of some people that have stature in our world today and they have an unholy anointing on their life and people listen to them and they're influential. So what we're seeing happen in the closing hours of the dispensation of the church age and the emerging hours of the tribulation period is there's a war. It's a battle royal. It's a battle between the things of God and it's a battle between 
the things of Satan that's emerging, trying to get people ready mentally and spiritually for the advent and the introduction of the Antichrist. And it's coming, and it's coming quickly, and we must face it. I must talk about it. I would be doing a disservice to the Holy Spirit if I knew these things and didn't say anything about it. I'm trying to tell you this is what's happening, and it's happening quick, and you know that it's happening quick. Nothing is the same right now. And every day it seems like there's an erosion of what we had three or four months ago. Every day things are eroding. There's shortages. There's all kinds of things that's happening right now. And I want you to listen to something. When Jesus Christ came, he was God incarnate. It was Jehovah God incarnate in the person of his son, Jesus Christ. It was called the Immaculate Conception. God, very God, the Bible says. Jesus was God, very God. It was God incarnate. The Antichrist will actually be Satan incarnate. It will be Satan's son. And I want you to listen to me carefully, please, ladies and gentlemen. If the Antichrist is the Antichrist, it means that he's going to be anti-Christ. But don't be fooled into believing anything different than what I'm about to tell you. What you're going to see happening in the near future, and you're already seeing it on a lower level right now, is you're seeing persecution beginning to come against Christians. Antichrist, that Antichrist spirit will be anti-Christian. It will be against the church. It will be against singing, worship. It will be against soul winning. They're going to try to pass legislation coming against the church to stymie us from being able to do the work of the ministry in the last days. You're going to be mocked. You're going to be made fun of. If you lift your voice and you speak up for the Lord and you speak up for the Bible, you're going to be mocked, ridiculed, lambasted. Those kinds of things are beginning to happen already. So here's what I want to say to you today. This is not something that I enjoy telling you. But with all the things that we see going on, I want you to understand that's probably not going to get better. But I believe there's going to be two tracks. You're going to see this track of the world getting ready for the Antichrist and his regime. And many people are going to begin to fall for it. It's going to be like a tidal wave that's going to come in. And people all of a sudden are going to be real favorable toward anarchy and antichrist type things and antichrist doctrines. And there's going to be a lot of hatred and you're going to begin to see that happening more and more. But on the other hand, you're also going to begin to see the church of the living God become more anointed and they're going to proliferate. The church is going to grow under this persecution. And I believe there's going to be some of the greatest miracles that the world has ever seen during this period of time. What happened when Christ was crucified? Immediately they had to hide out. They didn't have the liberties. They began to arrest the apostles. They began to arrest some of the other teachers and pastors. But they began to arrest them. They began to persecute them. But when they did, the church just exploded in growth. But also, not only that, but great miracles Undeniable miracles began to happen so that even the people that was on the side of those that were prosecuting and persecuting the church had to admit this is a miracle noteworthy and it could not have been done by man. And even they had to recognize that's what I believe is about to happen in the world today. Great miracles are going to begin to happen in light of the tremendous persecution that's coming upon the people of God. And God evidently is about to do great and mighty things before he pulls the church out of here. The Lord is not going to let the devil have the last word. So when you begin to look at these different dispensations, all seven of them, grace is now coming to a close. You know that, and I know that, it's coming to a close. Can you believe it? I'm standing here right now in my church that I pastor. This church is empty. I have some camera guys back there. 
and I have Bert and Logan here with me, but this church is empty. People can't come here. And it's under, all this is happening because we're under a mandate to social distance because of a virus. But it's so much more complicated than just a virus. It's something that Satan has perpetrated upon the nations and upon the leadership of the nations. And it's like a spell has been cast, as I said last week. And the Bible says whenever Adam sinned, he turned everything that God blessed him with and gave him the mandate to rule the earth as the underlord under, under God, to rule the earth. When mankind sinned, he gave it over to the devil. And the Bible says that the whole world lies under the wicked one, the whole world. So if the whole world lies under the power of the wicked one, it's no surprise that what's going on right now is involving the nations of the whole earth. And it's like the devil has put a spell upon the leaderships and the nations of the whole earth. And it's like there's nobody strong enough and nobody has the prominence and the stature to stand up and speak out and to drive this back. It is a spiritual thing. And you're going to see this happen more and more. That's exactly the way things are headed. And have you noticed the peculiar um, discrimination that there is against the people of God in the church of the living God? Even governors telling congregations you can't sing. You can't sing in church. You can't go to church. You can't do this. You can't do that. And it's a discrimination against the people of God. And if anybody on the news stands up and tries to say something about we're living toward the end time, the anchors of those networks will actually go on television that day or the next day and make fun of them and mock them openly. Persecution. People of God, I want you to listen to me. I don't like to be the one to do this, but I just want you to listen to me. I believe that there's coming a level of persecution that we have not yet seen in our lifetimes. And I just want to ask you the question, are you ready for it? Are you ready for that if that should happen? Now, there's a lot of great things that God is going to be doing, and I feel confident about that. But if you are thrown for a loop whenever persecution comes your way, Believe me, you're going to be sidetracked a lot because persecution is going to come against the people of God. It's going to come against apostles of God, pastors, teachers, evangelists. It's going to come against pastors. It's going to come against all fivefold giftings of the ministry. It's going to come against leaders of your churches, your pastor. It's going to come against worship leaders. You're going to see it. It's going to come. Matter of fact, it's already in motion. Those things are already beginning to happen. But I just want to ask you a question. Are you ready? Is what's going on right now really affecting you in a very negative way, like not being able to go out and do things and not be able to go to restaurants and not be able to go to church? If that's really affecting you, I understand that. But let me ask you this question. What's going to happen whenever you begin to be persecuted by friends, by colleagues and co-workers, that spirit comes upon them and they begin to persecute you, how are you going to do in regard to that along with everything else? Are you prepared for it? December the 19th, last year, the Lord spoke to me and he said that darkness is coming and darkness is going to degenerate into gross darkness. But he said, I have sent my angels. My angels are coming to help the people of God. And I believe that God is going to be helping us. And I believe there's going to be tremendous victories. But I also believe, and I just must have to tell you this, I also believe there's going to be tremendous sufferings because of persecution against the people of God and the work of God in the earth. You will see name brand preachers that has been respected for years, lambasted and mocked and made fun of, and you're going to have to make sure that you continue to stand with them and pray for them. Please tell me that you'll do that because it's going to be more important now than ever. Let's talk about the tribulation. The tribulation 
is a seven-year span of time known as Daniel's 70th week. It's a seven-year span of time where God picks up Israel again and God begins to deal with Israel, Jacob's seed. And the church age is now completed and God picks up Israel again and begins to deal with them. And when the Antichrist is revealed and when he comes on the scene and everybody knows who he is now, he will be the darling of the rebels. He will be the darling of the lawless crowd. He will represent them. He will be their darling. And whenever he comes on the scene, the first three and a half years of the tribulation, the Bible paints him as a white horse rider with a bow but no arrow, which means he's coming as a man of peace. And he will destroy many, the Bible says, with peace. And whenever he comes, he's going to have such a charisma about him that the nations of the world will go whoring after the Antichrist. He will be so persuasive. He'll have such an aura about him that the nations will go whoring after him. And for the first three and a half years, he will build his coalition of how he's going to rule and reign during the period of the, known as the tribulation period. But in the middle of that seven-year period, after the first 40, 42 months has expired, he will move into the temple that will be rebuilt in Jerusalem, and he will set himself up in that temple, and he will say that he is the Messiah, that he is God. Israel will not worship him. Israel would not worship Jesus Christ. They only worship Jehovah. And when the Antichrist says that he's God, Israel will turn against the Antichrist. And when they do, that's when all hell begins to break out. Not only against Israel, but in the nations of the earth. That's when the Antichrist says, nobody will buy or sell except my permission, except you have my name or the number of my name on your forehead and in your forehand, on the back of your hand. And that's when the tribulation period is in full sway. It's known as the Great Tribulation. The first 42 months is known as the Tribulation. The last 42 months is known as the Great Tribulation. And the Bible says this, except that last 42 months be cut short, it will be so bloody, it will be so vicious and so violent that no flesh will be able to survive the rule and the reign of the false prophet and the Antichrist. That's where we find ourselves right now, the closing out of the dispensation, the church age, the emerging of the tribulation period trying to begin, and we're in the squeeze. That's where we are. We're in that squeeze. How are you doing with it, friend? How are you doing with it? I know that God's going to take care of you. I know that he has promised to send his angels, and I know that they're here, and they're watching over us but there's still going to be persecution. And you're going to see things on the news that you thought you would never see with your eyes on the news. There's going to be things that's going to happen. Evil men, the Bible says, will wax worse and worse. And what you're seeing right now, trust me, it will get worse and worse and worse. That's what's coming. That's what you're seeing. And we've got to be ready for the soon coming of Jesus Christ. I'll tell you what we've got to do. We've got to get back into church. We've got to get back into church. We've got to get back into prayer. We've got to get back to the place that we begin to call upon the Lord and let the church be the church in the closing hours of this church age. Let the church be the church. Let the preachers begin to preach. Let the teachers begin to teach because people out there, even sinner people, are watching my programs right now. Even sinner people are asking questions. Preacher, what the world's going on? How did this happen? What, what's going on? How, what, what's what's going to be happening? And I'm trying to tell you the best I can as a human being what's going to be happening. But there's nothing like reading your Bible and letting the Holy Spirit direct your readings so that he can help you also be prepared for what's coming upon the face of the earth. So I want to pray for you. I entitled this message today, God's Stopwatch. There's seven dispensations. 
God's had stopwatches on every one of these dispensations. But I want to close by saying this. There's also a stopwatch on your life. But the Bible says man's days are numbered. Man's days are numbered. Let me ask you this question. How many more days you got left? You don't know. How many days do I have left? I don't know. I have no idea. But there's a stopwatch on my life. There's a stopwatch on your life. But how are things with you and the Lord? Are you ready? If something should happen to you, if you should pass away quickly in a car accident or some kind of an unusual accident or you should pass away with a stroke or a heart attack or if Christ should come back, how are things between you and the Lord? How are things between you and the Lord? Do you love Him? Have you told Him you love Him? Have you asked Him to come into your heart? Have you asked Him to save you from your sins? Believe me, these things that I'm talking about is going to be more important in the days to come than you can begin to imagine or I can begin to imagine. You need to get that assurance right now that things are right between you and God because you just don't know what a day may hold. You don't know from the time you go to bed at night right now until you get up in the morning. You don't know what may have happened in the world or in this nation that will turn this nation and turn your life around and put it on its ear just that quick. You need to be ready. I'm going to be preaching like this more than I ever have before. I can see and I can feel and understand. I can read the signs of the times and I know that time is running out. There's a stopwatch on everything. And when the time's up, this dispensation will be over, the church will be caught out, and the next one to come will be the advent of the Antichrist. We just happen to be right here in this little slice of time right now. Don't be overcome by it. Don't be discouraged by it. But be prepared in Jesus' name. God bless you. I pray for you. Lord, keep them. Bless them, everyone that's listening to me those that may be afraid, Lord, those that may be uneasy, and those that may not have quite enough knowledge about what all is going on, but they know something's going on. Would you keep them, Lord? Draw near to them, comfort their hearts. And Father, help us to all be ready should the coming of Christ be at the door even quicker than what I can even imagine. Father, help us all to be ready and to be prepared in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, friends. Thank you very much.